Hey guys, it's Lisa. Welcome or welcome back to the book club and welcome to the patio. <laughs> I thought I would uh, take it outside today because it's a nice day in Vancouver and it's kind of getting sunny out. So I thought I'd change up the scenery for both you and I. Uh, today, I want to talk about the big tomes in my house. Uh, all the big books that I love to read and want to read. And I'm part way through. Some of them I haven't even cracked yet. Uh, so I thought I'd just share them with you. Um, I have nine books that I pulled off my shelves. And uh, yeah, so let's just go, to, go through them. I like big books. And I try not to be too intimidated by them. Um, especially after my coming off my Napoleon read, I feel fairly confident. I have more confidence about reading bigger books. So thought I'd uh, pull out the big ones that I have on my bookcase and show them to you. I don't think I've talked about any of these books on my channel before yet. So let's get into it. Uh, oh, before I do that, let's talk about what a big book is for me. So a big book for me is usually anything about seven to 800 pages or greater. And um, <laughs> I feel like once you start getting into that end of things, I mean, you're committed, right? You're, you're committing. So the first book on my list is actually just short, short of that. Um, it's The Romanovs by Simon Sabag Montefiore. I think that's how you say his last name. And this one comes in at 657 pages. It's the smallest one on this list. <laughs> uh, it was published in 2016. So this is about the Romanov dynasty, about the uh, Russian family that ruled uh, Russia for 300 years. I don't know anything about Russian history. I don't know anything about Russian history. Um, I've, you know, know of and heard of the Romanovs and um, I think I know a little bit about the the demise of the family, uh, what happened. But um, yeah, I don't, I'm interested in reading this. So, uh, you know, it's this beautiful edition and I'm looking forward to learning more about um, the Russian dynasty. So this old Russian dynasty. So what sparked my interest in this was when I was reading Napoleon, he of course, uh, one of his, when he was trying to pick a second wife, um, he tried to uh, get a match with a Romanov princess, but uh, she was quite young at the time and her family kind of put it off. So he lost interest, but I was like, oh, I don't know anything about the Romanovs. So here we go. I'm going to make it happen. Uh, I don't know when, like I have, uh, that's the other thing. I have no timelines on any of these books. They're just in my collection. Some of them I've, this is a fairly um, recent book that I picked up, but a lot of these other ones I've had in some cases for a long time. Um, yeah, so that's the first one. <laughs> All right, the next one. The next one is The Histories by Herodotus. So this, I have this beautiful Penguins classic uh, deluxe edition and it's got maps and an index and glossary and all in, like I included um, in these page counts, I usually just count the text, not the notes or anything else. But in this one I did because there's a huge glossary and I know I'm going to have to read it to understand this book. So this one comes in at 834 pages. It was published in around 425 BC. So uh, Herodotus um, is really accredited for being the father of history. He was the world's like first historian. He was, he, this is his book about the Grisho Persian, is that, am I saying that right? Persian Wars, um, like the Trojan Wars and stuff, I believe. Uh, and he's also a bit of a storyteller, like, but it's kind of like, you know, that's how people got information back then was just sharing stories and talking and stuff. So uh, a lot of that is like, uh, you know, apparently he's quite famous for going off on tangents that really have nothing to do with what you think is, you know, the plot of his book. But um, yeah, so I, I've i always wanted to read the histories. I actually did with uh, Jennifer Brooks's channel. She was gonna do a reading. Um, I have this reading schedule for a month of November. And I don't think this was last year. I think it was the year before. I'm not quite sure, but she had um, put out a schedule for what books to read during 
during the month so she wanted to read this for nonfiction November and um, she was gonna set up a discord server but I think things went kind of off uh, things didn't quite work out or didn't quite happen um, so I never ended up reading my like I think I only got part way into book one so uh, yeah anyway I want to pick this up at some point and continue reading it or well I'll probably need to reread it and keep going so that's his that's the histories all right the next one is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. Uh, this one clocks in at 1,006 pages. It was published in 2004. So this book is fiction and it's, um, I think she also wrote Piranesi, uh, which I haven't read, but this is, I believe, magical realism. It's set in London and it's, um, you know, there's still uh, magicians uh, in society, but not very prominent. And I think it's a, about, you know, the resurgence of magicians. And there's a blurb on the back about the book by, you know, the, the year is 1806, so it's set in the 1800s. And England is, you know, just bogged down in this war with Napoleon, which of course, I forgot that was, that was a part of this, this book. And it's about the musicians, and I think they, are trying to battle it's English the English and versus the French and then it's these magicians battling with each other I'm not quite sure uh, I do like to go in the most of my books quite blind but um, yeah so you know it's a chonker uh, <laughs> and but it sounds really fun and I want to get into it so that's book number three we're now over a thousand pages let's keep going okay my next one <laughs> they're getting bigger and bigger, is The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich by William Schur Schurier. So this, this big daddy <laughs> comes in at 1,147 pages and it was originally published in 1959. So I put a post-it note, it's got, you know, the Nazi flag on there. I don't know how sensitive YouTube is about stuff like this, so I just covered it up. But um, this is fascinating. So I'm actually, about halfway through this book. Um, I started reading it a, a number of years ago and then again for some reason I put it down. I have a real bad habit of putting books down and then not coming back to them so it's not like a full-on DNF but one thing I was doing for myself just like I did with Napoleon is I was taking lots of uh, annotations during the chapter and then I did these chapter summaries on post-it notes so when I want to pick this book up all I really have to do is uh, just flip to the end of each chapter, read the summary, what that chapter was about, and I'll be, I think I'll be fresh enough to uh, get back into this. So again, I don't know anything about World War III or this period of time. And the reason I started reading this is because I was starting to kind of, I kind of got into a bit of a phase about reading historical uh, fiction. And I was reading a book set around World War II and I kind of realized I don't really know much about this time period. Like my son is fascinated with this period of time. He can tell me anything about, <laughs> about it and I'm just lost. So I started reading this book and it's, it truly is very fascinating. And even though it was written in uh, 1959, this is the 50th anniversary edition that I have, it reads fresh. Like it, it really does read fresh. The author holds n nothing back. Uh, when he's talking about the despots that are in this book, um, and that's and I was taking my time going through. Uh, I, I am listening along with an audiobook uh, on this as well because again, it just helps me with the pronunciation pronunciation of the German or the Austrian or whatever it is we're talking about, and all of the German names of all the despots that were featured in here. And, you know, I was going down the rabbit hole and looking up their pictures on the internet. I wasn't doing character studies like I did in Napoleon. I didn't go that far, but you know, I had on all the acronyms and all the different military system that was set up. Um, you know, it, it is a bit of a dense read, but once you kind of get into all that and get used to it and get to know who the main criminals are that are featured in this book, um, it's, it's quite interesting. So like I said, I'm halfway through um, and where I left off, we're on the eve of World War II breaking out. So that's where I'm at. So that is the rise and fall of the Third Reich. Fascinating, highly recommend if you're interested in anything from this period of time. 
All right, the next book I have is another hefty. My biceps are getting sore as we get through the pile. And they are in, I put them in the uh, shortest uh, to longest books. So I, I debated about putting this on here because I could do a whole separate video on these books. Um, but this is War and Peace by uh, Leo Tolstoy. So I have a whole set of Russian classics. They're not all huge tomes like this, but you know, I think War and Peace is pretty well known for being a big, big book. Um, the version I have, the edition I have is 1,215 pages and it was written in, in 1869. So again, I read about, a, I'd say a quarter of this book and I am enjoying it, but I think I need to kind of, and I, and I was doing the same thing with um, any big book that I read. I do chapter summaries. Uh, so when I put it down, I can flip back and kind of get caught back up. And I had a whole tabbing system for this book. I, it's not something I normally do, but um, like an annotating system. But um, it's really set during the time of the Napoleonic Wars. And now that I know so much more about that, I think I'll get a greater appreciation for this book because it really is set during that time. Um, uh, Russia's involvement with, um, you know, the Napoleonic Wars and things like that. So. I think I'll have a greater appreciation for it now that I have a little background. And um, yeah, it, it's a really good book. There's This edition is great. It has a character list in the front so you can kind of keep track of the different families and who they are that's in it um, and how they relate to each other. That really helps, especially with the Russian names. I, can't, I don't know if I'm following along. I don't remember that I'm following along with a audiobook on this one. I, I think I... Am. I think there was a free version I found and it doesn't quite perfectly match up to the trans this translation um, But it's close enough that it wasn't really bothering me. I think I remember that but um, yeah, so that's War and Peace. It's uh, <laughs> We're getting bigger and bigger. Let's keep going Okay, this next one might be a little bit more obscure um, <laughs> But it's so good and again, I uh, I just never finished reading it so it's called Jerusalem by Alan Moore. Um, he is an amazing, uh, his autobiography, like the blurb about the author on the back is that he's a magic magician, performer, and a um, comic writer. So I can't remember the name of the comic series he's done. V for Vendetta, I think he wrote that. Uh, I'll put a thing on the screen if I'm wrong. And he is, yeah, it, he's quite interesting. So this book, is really about his love story to, uh, you know, England. Um, and it's about a whole variety of people that live in this town and there's a map in the front. This is a work of fiction. And it's, um, you know, so the, it spans hundreds of years and no, you know, we jump back and forth in different periods of time. Uh, we get to know some characters and then hundreds of years later, we'll look, get to know some other characters and then we'll eventually learn to learn how they connect. So there are connections. Some of the characters are ghosts, like they're dead. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's really interesting and um, I am really enjoying it. So did I say how big it is? It's 1,262 pages. Uh, so it is longer than War and Peace <laughs> in this edition, and it was written in 2016. So, uh, yeah, so that's Jerusalem. It's really good. Uh, again, I just need to pick this back up when I feel like I want to, because it, it really is interesting. I, I am enjoying it. All right, so that's Jerusalem. All right, so we've got three more. Uh, the next one I have is nonfiction. And it's by the same author as the Romanovs. It's called The World, uh, again by Simon Sebag Montefiore. So this is actually uh, more of a recent purchase that I made. And uh, I've only just read the introduction and a bit of the first chapter. It's 1,263 pages. So I think it's one page longer than <laughs> Jerusalem. It was published in 19, or pardon me, in 2022. And basically this is a book about the family history of humanity. So through, and through storytelling. So it's, you know, where he starts way back, uh, way back, you know, and he even talks about that, about the debate of when history starts. Um, 
he says, you know, historians like to argue about when history started, whereas archaeologists are like, it's when writing was invented and that's where it starts. So, um, you know, we, we go back and, and uh, start at, you know, migration of humanity uh, and out of, you know, the plains of Africa and then across the globe. And he's got this map of, you know, human um, migration across the, the globe from 7,000 BC to 1300 AD. So, um, and then in the back, he's got a, a map of, you know, the geopolitical makeup of today. So it's quite interesting. Again, this is a, um, a I've only just dipped into this. It's, it's a bit of a denser read. Uh, I do have to stop and um, I was stopping and had to look up you know, words, circle words that I didn't understand, things like that. But then I found the audiobook and the, it's narrated by the author plus a full cast. So I think the audio, audiobook is gonna be a way to go to, with this one. And again, it'll help me with pacing and everything. But I haven't uh, downloaded that yet because you know, I've got so many other things on the go right now. But um, yeah, so, and look, look at this cover. I think it's beautiful. So that's the world and it's just a, I think it's just going to be a really cool uh, take on human human history, and uh, yeah, uh, I'll tell you more about it as I as I work my way through it. Okay, second to last. Okay, I've owned this one for a long time. It's Les Misérables by Victor Hugo. So I've always been intimidated to read this book because it's again about the French Revolution, and I knew nothing about it, but having read Napoleon <laughs> and now being a little bit more up to speed and a little bit more versed on that period of time, I've pulled this off my shelf and I'm like, I think I still own this book and I do and it's a brick. It is 1,304 pages and it was published in 1862. So, um, you know, this is, this is just the tragedy and the triumph of our main characters, you know, Jean, Val Jean, Van Jean, Jean Valjean, is that his name? Jean Valjean and um, Fantine. Uh, I've, I, I think I've seen, I think I've seen a musical of this. Uh, I think, you know, uh, did I watch the Hugh Jackman musical? I might have um, in Anne Hathaway. I can't quite remember. I think I have seen that or at least part of it. Um, so, uh, I think it's, I don't think that's spoilery or anything, like, especially with these big books, like, sometimes I find that having a little bit of a background or watching a movie adaptation or something to help me kind of understand the characters and the context uh, before I go into this stuff can be helpful, so it's another, just another strategy, so, um, yeah, so that's Les Mis. it's, it'll happen one day, it's on one of these, these books that I want to read before I die kind of things, right? So, uh, okay, last but not least, my biggest book on the list, and it is 1,340 pages, and it's the Bible. <laughs> uh, the edition I have is that long. It's the, I'll do a whole, so I've had other, many people ask me to do a whole separate, um, or do a video on, on this, like I've, you know, doing character studies and all kinds of stuff um, as I go through this, and and I'll say it again, I am not doing Bible study tutorials on my channel. It's not who I am. It's not what I do. I'm a total noob. <laughs> I'm a total noob. Uh, but, you know, I'm reading this just out of interest. I think it's, um, you know, such a foundational book in our culture, like it or not. Uh, but it is so heavily referenced in our society, whether um, we realize that or not. Like, even things we say or, you know, common phrases or thing, you know, it, a lot of that stuff has a biblical reference that I didn't even know about. And um, so I haven't read this in a while. I've been kind of slack with it. I'm still in First Samuel. I last, I can't remember the last time I read it. I think it was a couple weeks ago. But again, I'm leaving myself lots of breadcrumbs, lots of post-it notes. Um, Lots of, you know, I can, and, and then I said in another video when I tackle these things, I watch a YouTube video that gives a summary of the book and then uh, gives you the, um, 
and I'll link to their channel. It's, it gives you, they give you a, a whiteboard video of the book and um, what it's about, how it's structured and all that stuff. So it kind of primes you, <laughs> primes me. So I know what I'm getting into. So I know what I'm going into. Cause if I just pick this up and start reading, I get really lost. There's a lot of characters, everybody's related and it's, well, <laughs> I'm being general. You know what I mean? Um, you know, there's a lot of genealogy lists and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, yeah, so that's the Bible. It's the biggest book on my list. I wasn't surprised. I actually wasn't quite sure if the, this version I have was bigger than um, uh, Les Mis, because I knew Les Mis was over 1,300 pages. Uh, but I think the, if, if the Bible was printed on like regular paper, because uh, this is a journaling Bible, so it's not like, you know, that wispy, like, crepe paper, thin paper, but it's still pretty thin paper. And I think if it was on, like, a published on, a, you know, a regular kind of paper that we see these other books published in, it, it would easily be twice the size of this. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's it. So those are my big books that I want to read. And um, I got a mix here of fiction and nonfiction, and uh, I think it's, uh, a good spread of uh, interesting things that I want to get to one day. So I just thought I'd share. Uh, let me know if you like reading book, big books. What's the biggest book you've ever read? I think the biggest book I've ever read to date, and it's one of the two, I've read them both. I can't remember which one is longer. It's The Stand and It by Stephen King. And I'm pretty sure they're at least 1,100 pages each. And I can't remember or almost 1200 and I, and they're really close in size, but those are the biggest books that I've read. <laughs> and um, yeah, and, and so there we are. I hope you liked this video. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me on the patio today. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, evening or morning, wherever you may be. And I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye. Good enough. That's a big pile of books. Whew. I don't even, I can't even get them in on the same screen. <laughs> all right, time to put the stuff away before it all falls. <laughs>